reporting on the games you love by people who love to game. The MMO Reporter Network. You're logging into your favorite game, grinding out some gear. A couple of points added to your stats, and you have a virtual beer. Max level is pretty cool, but I'll remind you here, my friend. These games are not about the goal, it's about the journey and not the end. You're listening to MMO Reporter, brought to you by audible.com get a free audiobook download at audibletrial.com slash mmo reporter and by doghouse systems choose your weapon with doghouse systems don't 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 forget about your ult you need to cherish each and every little character you've got no matter what level they're at Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of MMO Reporter. This is episode 163. I'm Chris and I am joined by my favorite gentleman whose name implies the need for a razor, Mr. Harry Hall. Hello, Harry. I do have a beard, so you are kind of correct, but I don't need a razor. No. I'm keeping it, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, uh, someone who whose name usually brings about a sense of dread when it comes in the mail, uh, Bill. Hello, Bill. I prefer to think of it as just implying payment. <laughs> Pay your bill. But 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 d- never mind. I was going to make some dirty joke, but I'm not going to go there. Uh, <laughs> hi guys, uh, I'm happy to be back. It's uh, it, I was sad to miss last week, although I listened to the episode, and I don't know if I'm ever letting you record without me again. Were you gone? <laughs> <laughs> when oh. did that happen? I don't remember that one. Uh, yeah, I remember. You, it's probably because you sounded show. drunk, but I yeah can't deny that. <laughs> Okay. I don't, th- I don't think I was. I don't think I was completely out of it. But we had just celebrated a very close loss in curling, so it was a. It was a. It was a thing. We, there, there needed to be some. It was. It was the combination of of celebration and consolation, drinking. Right, right, right. Well, that just doesn't sound right because this show last week was awesome and crazy all at the same time. <laughs> Uh, All right, let's get into what we've been doing in games, because funny enough, that's why we're here. Bill, why don't you start? Well, and I'm starting to feel like a broken record, because, you know, when I came back onto the podcast, I've got like eight MMOs installed on my computer right now, and I have played precisely one for, I think, almost a month now, and that's been Guild Wars 2. Uh, still playing the the or was playing the escape from Lions Arch event. The the new event is up now. The the attack on Lions Arch or the the retaking of Lions Arch. I can't remember what it's called now, but I haven't even played it yet. But I am ready for that. But still having tons of fun in Guild Wars two. So yay that. Awesome. Um, I I did slide onto the interweb and find uh, a new game on Harry's recommendation to for threes. I scoured and searched and found a, I'm not sure how legitimate it is, and I don't even really want to ask, but uh, if you go to threesjs.com, you will find a, a web version of the game threes. And that is a great way to make sure that you will waste a crazy amount of time. If you're ever for all you office workers there that have to pretend (laughs) like you're doing work on your computer during the day and it looks it's bad optics when you're messing around on your phone right in front of you. This is perfect because it minimizes behind an Excel spreadsheet beautifully and (laughs) it's it's it just works and it's it's a very true threes recreation so the the only thing that i've noticed is that uh on the i on the iphone or on the ios device you can sort of preview where your new tile is going to go when you that's when you swipe missing. you can't yes. do that here and that's the only i mean you could it's a little bit more of a challenge but it's it's fun 
It so, misses the music and the sound effects too. It's really bare bones because one of the things that makes threes so charming is the sounds, the voices, the music. It's it's really a high quality little game. Yeah, the the music is actually not too bad on the site. It's it's not. It it There's does music on the site. Gets, oh my yeah. god, this is so addicting. It is, isn't it? <clears throat> well, and and for those of you, and this is going to be your Android service here. Oh, that for is those the, of you that's the actual music. I just I did, didn't know it was. Oh you God! You just have to turn it up for the for the you Android people out there who are really sad that you they have to work so hard to get a threes experience. I found fives in the Google Play Store, and it's actually not bad. It's it's essentially the same experience with slightly different math. You're Sorry. adding twos and threes instead of ones and twos. Stop playing. Oh, Jeez, this, no. I realize this uh, is a step up from Flappy Bird, but there's there's a little bit of diligence I'm expecting from you guys here. At least respond in like at least monosyllabically on what you guys think of threes. Uh, Good. <laughs> Excellent. So uh, Harry, I'm going to give you ample ramp up warning here because I'm going to throw to you. That's all I've played this week, Harry. How about you? What? Wait, me? <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> Damn no, it. The other Harry. That's what I was. <laughs> it's confusing uh, sometimes. It's hard. I know. <clears throat> I have to go on a quest to find myself. Um, Okay, I I uh, I haven't played any MMOs this week. It's <laughs> shocking, I know. <laughs> Gasps of uh, no, I I um, first of all, we uh, I played <laughs> Civilization Five uh, solo, <laughs> and then I played Civilization Five multiplayer. And by the way, we discovered something that w really wasn't fun and could have cost uh, uh, could have broken up a, a good friendship. Because Civilization Five is is fundamentally broken in the multiplayer department. Oh no! We discovered this. We discovered this is uh, uh, apparently common knowledge uh, among multiplayer Civ players. Um, you can trade with your uh, opponents, right? So you can do offers, for example, for mm -hmm. uh, we might want to make uh, an agreement on open borders or a peace treaty or or sell and buy stuff. That's normal. That that works. Mm -hmm. But then um, you can refuse and make a counter offer. So uh, a friend of mine says, I want open borders. And I said, OK, uh, no, I don't. I do. I want to do this, but only if you pay me 10 gold per turn. And the thing is, after you've modified your turn, the person who modified it can accept it for the other person. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not very. No. And it, it, it goes further than just trading. So you can, ba and I've, I've gone on Reddit and I saw people obviously abusing this by, for mm -hmm. example, uh, the, the, the obvious thing to do is take all the cities of the other person, right? But more fun would be to make the other person declare war on all the AI's to city <laughs> state. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, so, <laughs> see. That we we must... discovered this completely. Sorry, yeah, Bill. I was just going to say that must be patched, like because you mentioned you were playing base, uh, bare bones Civ Five, right? Um, I have you... no idea if this. Uh, but you you would imagine this would be patched out of the uh, vanilla Civ. I mean, this is a basic yeah. function. Yeah, and but... you're. Are you fully expanded in Civ Five, or are you just in the in the bare bones version? I have all the expansions and I'm fully patched up and I'm using Steam. All of us are using Steam. So you, you would imagine we are all up to date with the latest version. And I've seen in uh, on, on message boards that um, this is still out there. It isn't working fixed as yet. intended. <laughs> it's definitely not working as intended. The problem was I didn't know that. Look, I, um, I was kind of a, a warmonger in the game and I was actually... Uh, I was trying to play my two friends by 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 saying out loud like no I'm not gonna attack him or things like that or uh, no he really no I, I was just trying to make them declare war in each other didn't work because they like each other more than they like me so that's a good lesson um, <clears throat> but I uh, discovered this by accident because I tried to get open borders with India to do some uh, reconnaissance before I would attack him. Um, but 
somehow uh, he kept refusing it, and then I modified it, and then I accepted it. I saw the accept window and accepted it again. I thought maybe he did notice, and he agreed with my proposal. And then he was like, what happened? Why, why are you in my borders? And then we just discovered that this whole thing was a bug. And obviously I felt guilty, so I gave him all my furs and gold and whatever, because I don't want to, I don't want to cheat. I, I like to play the game. I, I like to play the cheat at a game. So that makes the game a lot less fun, hmm. you know, if, if that option is there. Now, I really, I don't enjoy, I, I don't mind losing a game. I'm trying to win, but I don't mind losing, and I definitely don't want to win by abusing a, a stupid system. So I wasn't winning, by the way. Even even by cheating, I couldn't win because <laughs> because my, <laughs> my United States is is broke. It's unhappy. Hmm. It's underproducing. It has no army. I I, I, I declared war on on my friend with uh, literally one archer. <laughs> <laughs> That's how that work out for you. <laughs> I apologize and said it was an accidental declaration of war. <laughs> <laughs> and that worked. <laughs> That's hilarious. Actually, it was accidental in the sense that I um, um, accidentally uh, thought, what would happen if I pressed, pressed this button? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, anyway, I feel it, like, Carrie, uh, you're the, just t over the last couple of weeks, you're fixing... Yeah, I feel like you, it, the the analogy that's in my head is that you've basically gotten tired, or during during the day or the week, you get tired of doing crack, so you break out the meth when you switch <laughs> between threes and civ. <laughs> Actually, that's not that far from the truth. And and to to to, to get my methadone fix, so to say, the the the, the substitute that's less less damaging, I, I installed Sid Meier's Railroad. <laughs> Which is oh, yeah. just the same freaking thing, but then with trains, which yeah. is awesome. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a lot of fun. You just build your railroad, build your empire. It's it's fun. It, it was in this Sid Meier Humble Bundle. And so finally, that... I tried Sid Meier's Pirates. From um, railroads to pirates? I, I, they, they should really combine those three in one big game. <clears throat> and I play Sid, threes, but uh, Sid uh, civilization of railroads and pirates. Wouldn't you buy that? I would certainly take a long hard look at it. Yes, I can't deny <laughs> yeah, that. That does sound like fun. Uh, so uh, I had just had a Sid Meier week. Wow. Uh, as for me, I've I've been actually fairly. Uh, limited in my time in game, I've been spending quite a bit of time in Wildstar, really trying to get the classes under my belt, doing a lot of dungeon runs in the last few weeks. Got a, a bunch of videos up on YouTube about those dungeon runs, so if people want to check them out, just check out our YouTube channel. We'll have all the info at the end, and um, trying to make some strat guides for for the bosses. And I have to say, one of the coolest things about Wildstar is that the first boss in the first dungeon in uh in in the exile side of things for wildstar is equally as hard if not harder than all of the first raid bosses that i have done in any game and it is the first boss in the first dungeon and it's already more challenging than that. It's just, um, you know, and I've got for for those of you who are watching the live stream, I've got um, I've got the the video going now, and uh, it, it's a combination of phases. Like usually, the first few bosses in dungeons are tank and spanks, right? Right. You go in and you get used to how things work, and and you do your thing. But this first one has three distinct phases. The first phase has this big uh, plus sign or cross or whatever uh, of a telegraph where you'll get damaged if you stand in it. So you have to dodge out of the way. That's not too bad. The second phase has uh, the boss is no longer killable. You have to kill the four. Uh, they're not ads because they're there the whole time. But the four other mobs around the area. Uh, while glowing stun orbs are going around in circles around there. Not only that, though, 
uh, each party member will randomly get selected and have an AOE put on them. But the thing is, you have a little bit of a warning that that AOE is going to become sticky and attack. So you see the little warning and you have to place that over that little ad that's there so that they get extra damage while you're fighting, doing all your regular stuff, dodging the stun balls. And then the third one, the stun balls stick around, except now there's three of them. The AOE thing is still there. Plus, there's this huge glyph that goes on the ground where there are only four spots in the entire room that you can stand without getting absolutely, absolutely smacked. Uh, and, oh, by the way, yeah, at every phase he disarms you, and you have to run around and find your weapon. That's the first <laughs> boss in the first dungeon, and I'm having so much fun. I'm just playing threes. <laughs> oh, come on! My impassioned speech about how much fun I'm having in Wildstar, and that's what I get? Oh, it's so much fun. I forgot about Wildstar this past two weeks. Every, th every time you mention it, I think, oh, wait, I can play that. And then I go back to Civ, so I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe next week. I'll, I'll try to find that, that same boss. And... But what do you think about the whole idea of starting out challenging and it took a few wipes before we got it but we had fun and i mean they're still tuning it's beta dps was a little out of whack for some of the classes uh but i mean that much complexity at the beginning of the dungeon runs it really i think it's go ahead i i, I think it's it's uh, a bit uneven because the game is is so easy okay the but first okay stop levels. how far did you get what's your highest level character not, I've, like 13, uh, really 14? Went, I th no, not that far. I think 8, right. 9. Right. And so, uh, and I mentioned this before to you too. I remember having this conversation. There is a distinct <laughs> change in the low teens where the yeah. game actually starts to become challenging in the PvE environment. A different type of challenging. It's just not, you know, face roll uh, through all the content. Um, That's so good. it's fun. It's challenging. It's not uh, a placeholder until you get to end game which, wow, at, at this point kind of is, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. It's fun. Some of the stuff is interesting, but you're just, th that's your penance for deciding to play WoW and trying to get to end games. You have to make it through <laughs> the rest of the game. Yeah. It's, what do you it's think? It's the sacrificing blood you have right. to make. Right. What do you think, Bella, about it being so challenging off the top? Uh, I think it's fine. Uh, the, the only <laughs> risk, I, I mean, it, I think it's a good step for a t game to take in its development it, it's it's a good way to get people hooked uh, as long as uh, as long as it's not so challenging that it actually drives people away because the other thing you have to realize with wild star is it's essentially going to be a direct competition with uh, eso when it comes out it's also in tacit competition with every other game that's been come out for the last three or four years at least as well as some of the more established ones so there's a line that difficulty is a good thing and it will engender a lot of praise and critical acclaim and get people to pay attention to your game that way. But if you cross that line in difficulty, people are just going to go to the more easily rewarding experience. So to get wishy-washy about the whole thing, it sort of depends. Yeah, the, the, may, it wasn't uh... challenging in a way that is, and I was worried about that too. It's not challenging in a way that is undecipherable. Uh, it's not like we have no idea what we're doing wrong. It's just hard. It's it's easily deciphered. You just have to get the muscle memory and get the right steps down. Mm -hmm. But there yeah, is no, something and... um, because I remember uh, entering the first dungeons in Guild Wars Two. And there was a lot of complaining, a lot of complaining that the, the first dungeons were too difficult. And they were. Uh, not, not, not too difficult as in uh, it was impossible, but it was a very steep learning curve there. And mainly that had to do with the fact that you didn't have an easy uh, trinity distinction between the classes. You just had to relearn a whole new strategy of dealing with trash, but trash mobs, but it was still a, a fairly difficult challenge to get to the first story dungeon on the normal difficulty. Yeah, I still and struggle with Guild Wars 2 dungeons. And I'm, I'm not sure that is a good way, of, because I was actually a little annoyed by that, because it the rest of the game is not uh, easy in the sense of, of blowing through everything. You have to keep your mind on the game while playing it, which is good. But the jump was really big. 
in the dungeon. Okay. And I, w- I want to be taught all the dungeon mechanics in a natural way before they throw right. everything at me. I found that, that Guild Wars 2, for me, it was what I was talking about as, as frustrating, which is, I don't know what I did wrong. We just all died. Yeah, yeah. Whereas <laughs> I, I don't get the same thing from either ESO or or Wildstar. And ESO was the other game that I played, Elder Scrolls Online. Not tons, but I, I had a lot of fun actually making a, oh gosh, I'm going to try and remember, Dragon Knight? No, what's the other warrior sort of class-ish? Boring? What's that? <laughs> Boring? Boring, no. The <laughs> the There's the, the Shadow Blade or whatever, the Sorcerer, the Dragon Knight, and the, what's the other one? Anyways, Nightblade. 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 No, but other than the Nightblade, the what's the the four, second warrior archetype sort of thing? Does this matter for the story? Well, not really. It's just I was <laughs> I was I played as an as an uh, as an orc going around with a big two handed mace, and that was uh, f- amazingly satisfying. Really, really tons of fun, and and really enjoyed uh, going through the early levels again with that, rather than my sorcerer. Didn't is, get... Maybe is, is is that? Do you get to, because one of the things I always roll mages at first, right? Maybe the, is 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 the combat sub- substantially better if you wield something that can hit rather than throw magic? I found it more fun. It could have been that I got a little tired of the sorcerer. I'm not one to be a very magey sort of class, but I I I. I rolled one the first time around because we sort of split up who was covering what for the the beta weekend the first beta weekend a while back and i was the last one to pick so i got sorcerer <laughs> <laughs> great way to pick your character class yeah uh but uh yeah it was uh it, it's uh, maybe i'm just not a sorcerer type of guy lots of people are enjoying it i'm just not particularly one of those i wasn't enjoying it either and that was just uh but uh, never mind. I, maybe I had more fun playing as a sorcerer with a two-handed sword. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> maybe you're right. Maybe your hypothesis is correct. And uh, and it's more about having something to hit. Because, it, man, I it was so. satisfying to wind up, run in while winding up the heavy attack and then connecting as I got close. Oh, that was satisfying. I'll give it another go. There you go. <laughs> All right, uh, that's it for what we've been doing in games. So let's go on because apparently, uh, uh, apparently there's a little bit of trouble in in Wowland. So uh, let's move on to the news. music from everquest 2 i forget i keep forgetting it's great mm-hmm. i um, just about thought it was back to the future actually it does sound like back to the future one of the best movie soundtracks in all existence i do have to think. i agree bum, yes bum, 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 alan silvestri bum. but it's not as good as the soundtrack to silverado a mediocre movie but a fantastic soundtrack I'm sorry. There's nothing ever that will be. Look it up. You'll you'll agree with me because it has all the things no. that will make you giddy. No. Play Silverado and you'll just know. But hey, this you know is we're not going to good... you, you look up Silverado. I'll talk about World of Warcraft because I have a public service announcement to everybody on the World of Warcraft forums. It's time <laughs> to freak out and get angry <laughs> because they are every, everybody in the World of Warcraft will be completely less powerful all your damage will go down everything you do will have less impact well actually no every everything you do will be exactly the same but the numbers that go with it will go down and i know that is a crime against humanity i think the courts in the hague should be notified because your numbers will go down but so will those of the enemies so everything will basically not change and i'm looking forward to seeing the forum discussions on this they're doing this to 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 squish the, the every basically World of Warcraft stats went out of 
out of whack. Every damage number on the higher levels w went so crazy. We've talked about this before. World of Warcraft, has, the people, the developers have talked about this before. They were actually uh, uh, tongue in cheek uh, considering turning damage into mega damage that you would hit for three mega rather than three million damage. They didn't want to do that, so rather than Sorry. that, they're just flattening. How much is the Sorry. damage? How, how much is it? Is it over nine thousand? It is. It is way over nine thousand. Oh, okay, and thanks. everybody knows that's the, that's the threshold. If you go over nine thousand, you have to scream and change things. And crush so that's things what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. So, but th th what they're doing is, uh, let's say a mob has a th uh, has a million uh, hit points, and now <laughs> Sorry, they're, they're making. You said a mob, and I'm thinking of the WoW forums and how fitting that is. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't antagonize them even more. <laughs> Sorry, let me just play well, that. Well, it basically comes down to if if a, if a mob has a million hit points and you damage them for a uh, hundred thousand per hit, now they're going to have a hundred thousand hit points and you're going to hit them for a thousand per hit, and that's basically what they're doing. So the the, the impact is not, is zero. It will just look less ridiculous. Yeah. Because uh, do you uh, really uh, want to hit for sixty million damage? But. Okay, look at the you look at the chart that they've got on this uh, on this this story, and it just looks so piddly now. Cause you look, and you get up to a level hundred, and you look at the power level, and it's crazy, right? It's amazing. And now you look at it before, and it's like, yeah. I there's that, something I, to be said about becoming near gods. But they and, need to. Go ahead, Bill. They did. Not, they did not do a good job of keeping the community calm with these. I, 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 I really believe they're trying to incite rage and discussion and controversy by by putting up graphs that look like this. I'm sure if you actually put the full uh, vertical scale on there, it probably wouldn't look so ridiculous. But by virtue of the way they drew those lines and the scale they drew them at, it just looks i mean it's like deliberately it's like trying for a fight it's basically like <laughs> shoving the community in the chest and say you want to go let's go <laughs> we're gonna do this what do you think of, what are you gonna do about it <laughs> beat me over by the bike racks <laughs> Uh, but it, it's uh, i'm 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 most definitely going to browse the forums and uh, make some popcorn and just watch <laughs> maybe may, maybe just put put a couple of uh, Messages in there. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll Guys, see what this happens. is a really great idea. Everyone should be really happy. Stir the pot. Or I'm so happy that my class isn't affected and everybody else's is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. No, it's it's. Um, I'm I'm pretty sure because I, I'm I make fun of the World of Warcraft community because uh, they're usually aggressive and and have no memory. <laughs> but that's not all. Of, that's not all of them. That's. I mean, I, I've met great people in World of Warcraft. Mm hmm. Some of my best friends are WoW players. <laughs> it just sounds racist. I'm not anti WoW. <laughs> <laughs> I totally have a friend who plays WoW. I, I know like a friend who has now, a friend who, but... who who played WoW and and liked it apparently. <laughs> Chris, we have another uh, game coming up that might maybe more uh, more interesting to me than to you. So that's the reason you're going to do the story. Yes, absolutely. There's this great story on on <laughs> Massively talking about an indie sandbox MMO called The Chosen that is the quote unquote game child bow, chicka, bow, wow, of Eve Online and Fallout Three. Harry, can you tell us more? Um. No, <laughs> actually, that's it. Basically, they are. Uh, th there's a video that I recommend you watch where they, it's it's still on uh, Indiegogo, and Indiegogo, if you don't know that, is the is a competitor to Kickstarter, well, also a crowd crowdfunding site. Um, <clears throat> Uh, it, it has a player driven economy, a persistent universe, a dynamic uh, mission system. Uh, both interior and exterior ship design. By the way, it is a space uh, uh, MMO, and that actually means that you can walk inside your ships. It's not just so you, you can walk being in space stations. Man, if only Eve had thought of that. 
then this that yeah i hope they're paying attention maybe they will implement something like that in the near future <laughs> but only, only on the hope. space stations harry only on the space station everything else would suck and be stupid yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and what you definitely shouldn't be able to do is interact with other people in those stations. Because otherwise... I just want to go on the space station and, like, watch TV. Sit on my couch and watch TV. If only well, what, what Eve else? could do that. What, what, what else would you do? I, I mean, know. I have... Th that's basically... So, <laughs> anyway... <laughs> Hang on, I, I need to get a cloth to wipe all the sarcasm <laughs> off here. <laughs> So oh, man. The chosen is uh, is 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 looking like one of those things that look great on paper, and I'm just really looking forward to see what they're going to do with it. I don't back Kickstarter games on a on a matter of principle, uh, usually, unless it's Eve. Uh, sorry, um, Star Citizen. No. no. What's the one? Elite. Elite. Damn it. Thank I, you. I forgot the name of my all, favorite all-time game. There was a fantastic article uh, on it. Do uh, you know the magazine Edge, which is a British uh, industry gaming uh, uh, magazine? Of course we do not. I'd, Sorry. Well, you should because it's one of the most, uh, one, one of the better gaming magazines out there. And they had a 27-page uh, special an interview with David Braben, the creator of the, uh, of the game, and apparently the game is all. Uh, and I'm talking about Elite now. Is 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 very very far along in the combat department, and it has full Oculus Rift support. And apparently, if you have your Rift on your head, and you're sitting in your cockpit, you are there. This is all I've been asking for since I was 11. That's, that's Eno enough about Elite. Uh huh. Because uh, we're not yeah. talking about that right now. No, but we should. We should actually talk about Elite. We should only talk about Elite. Okay, Do you go. know that Elite has a, <laughs> a full representation of the entire galaxy by procedurally generating most of the stars we don't know, but actually placing the stars in locations where we know there are stars, planets around them, and you have the ability to go explore the galaxy and find stars and star systems that nobody else has seen before? Does it dynamically add new stars as they're discovered? Does it, does it uh, actually hit the NASA database or...? It, it, it actually has all the stars there and you can go exp and, and the stars and the systems are dynamically generated uh, or, or procedur procedurally generated. I feel you like you can we're... discover new life. You can go out there and you can stake your claim. This is like the, the Oscars, guys. When the music <laughs> starts, you're supposed to move along. There's this I want to burly thank my man mother pulling me away from the microphone. And my producer. <laughs> And my agents and my little dog that just died before I made this movie, but I owe so much to him. Okay, let's go. <sighs> what did you think of the music, though, Harry? It's the be the best movie music ever made. That's okay. Uh, it's it's not as good as as perhaps uh, I don't know what I'm going to say, but you could talk about the next story. Well, I could, but oh, yeah, I, I should, actually. <laughs> uh, Neverwinter is going to add a new expansion, which is Ice... Ice, ice damn it. <laughs> Neverwinter is going to add a new expansion, which is Icewind Dale. Yay! Uh, and uh, this name should be familiar to people in the D&D uh, who are uh, steeped in D&D lore or are aware of the games that Bioware did that were uh, based on the D&D license. And there is this theory going around uh, the office of MMO Reporter that Neverwinter is basically picking all of the old Bioware names uh, or uh, uh, games, uh, expansions that were used by Bioware and going down everybody's fuzzy uh, childhood memories and trying to capitalize on that. And maybe they're doing that, doing that in a good way because Neverwinter was actually, is actually a pretty good D&D yeah. MMO. So, Bill, what do you think of, of an Ice Wheel, Icewind Dale expansion for Neverwinter? Would it make you play the game? I think so. I think I could get into it. I mean, Neverwinter's always been right on the cusp of a game that I sort of want to play. It's one of the zillions of MMOs that I have installed on my computer that I don't play. So, yeah, I, I, I could get on for that. I mean, Icewind Dale is is one of those just transcendent game experiences that I had for, bo for both for Icewind Dale and Icewind Dale 2. Uh, 
I remember playing those and just the, the the being captured by the story and and enjoying the gameplay so much and the that the and, and marveling at the beauty of the Infinity Engine that just looks like <laughs> Atari games now. Uh, but yeah, I even if it just even if it does nothing else but ev- evoke those kind of memories and vibes, I think that would be. A positive thing for Neverwinter, and, and and I would enjoy that. It's it's uh, I like the the fact that Neverwinter is has full access to all this D and D stuff. They mm-hmm. can go so many places, and they they, they pick the right D and D universe. Mm-hmm. I mean, DDO DDO is is fine in its own right. It's a fun game, but please the Eberron the Eberron universe still doesn't grasp me as much as, as the um, well they're, as Forgotten they're Realms over stuff. in Forgotten Realms now as well mm-hmm. yeah but yeah but it takes a while to get there you can't start there yeah I mean that's the big problem I mean if you could it, I, I'm pretty sure if, if you could start in the Neverwinter sorry in the uh, in the Forgotten Realms in DDO I would be playing it again because that would be a big draw do you need to be at least level ten or something to get there? And ten uh, is not the same as level ten in fifteen, another game. I think. Yeah, and fifteen is max level, and you have to basically that's level eighty in another game. Mm-hmm. Look at it like that. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Anyway, but it's it's looking it's looking good for Neverwinter. Apparently, the game I is still play up and running. Neverwinter. Yep. I, I don't. Bill, do you have another game for us? <laughs> I do have another game. Uh, we were talking about Star Citizen a little while ago, and we're going to talk about them again because I don't think all of the 212 developers that are working on the Kickstarter and otherwise crowdfunded game heard us the first time. So we're going to repeat it. Yes, there are 212 people working on Star Citizen. It's it, it, just reading through the article. Basically, it's it's uh, the the article that we're linking here is the monthly report, and they're talking about the progress they're making in the game. Uh, they're talking. They they made some allusions to the fact that the the community didn't feel that they were being a, as transparent as the community would like in terms of their development. So they've made taking a focus on going behind the scenes a little bit more and everything like that. Uh, that was to be the the kind of the background noise that was happening to the update here the big thing was just focusing in on that 212 people employed uh by robert space industries for star citizen that just seems like an absolutely phenomenal number of people for a crowd-funded game like people there's there's no backer there's no publisher that's that's fronting a ton of money and expecting a big payout there's nothing that's going to be held back in reserve from sales or anything like that this is just money that you and me and everyone else has just thrown in there and the game is being made based off the nickels and dimes and quarters that people have thrown in i just that just astounds me one of the things that seems to be kind of a there, there is some backlash coming from the whole not not just on Star Citizen, but um, I've heard several developers talk about the crowdfunded concept as something uh, that either scares them or they have to deal with it differently than they expected. Because if you have to deal with a publisher, you have one set of suits who bother you making your game, and now you have ten thousand. Screaming fans, who not only are screaming fans, but basically invest money and feel entitled even more so. Well, and careful how you use that word, though. Like, back up a sec. Careful how you use the word invested, because invested with Kickstarter and with other crowdfunding has a very different meaning than EA investing in a designer and publishing their game for them. Like they that, they they carry yeah. two wildly different meanings, and there's two wildly different uh, sets of returns implied by either case. Well, that's the interesting. That's that's actually the point I was trying to make, and you make it much more clear than I could because the poor, the the problem is uh, Kickstarter is basically a pre-order system. Let's mm-hmm. be very clear about that. If you mm-hmm. pay 15 bucks for a game, you are pre-ordering that. And the developers know we have so many people who want to buy this game so we can go ahead and make it. Mm-hmm. That's the system. While many people who are doing that 
feel they are actually not just pre-ordering, but investing and part owner of the people who are making this game. And that makes for some interesting discussions on forums. And that's what some developers are basically being, are actually uh, feeling now, that they feel they have way more pressure on them than when they're just dealing with a publisher, with a single publisher. Both sides have their, uh, mm-hmm. g- their, their uh, advantages, but I, I, I can imagine an, a publisher working for, uh, a, a developer working with so many people uh, thinking they have a say in your game can be a bit frustrating at times. Well, and it's I guess the pressure of it is is that you're you're not ultimately making one game. I mean, everybody, I'm sure the 212 people that they quote in this article are actually are hard at work at on Stardust's and and it's the focus of their professional lives and everything like that. But these are all people that want careers too, and I can see the I can understand the feeling of danger where you if you've stepped into a crowdfunding arena and you don't keep that crowd happy. Exactly. Might not help you make the next game and they might not help you continue your career to retirement or anything like that. So I can understand the danger there, but I also think that it's like you said, there's benefits either ways. I got to believe that the design freedom is there's a there is a lot more practical freedom that yes you do have to or, or there's a certain amount of uh, community backlash you at least have to be aware of and develop towards but ultimately you're not looking at a bunch of people that are going to just ultimately could throw up their arms and say that's it no more checks goodbye yeah because the money is already in their hands at this point I, I, that's true yeah I'm it's not like it can be taken back at this point but, but you know how short an attention span or a short a memory a group of people on the internet have. And that, and that's, that's, that can make it difficult for a developer. I mean, one wrong word and you have a complete, uh, completely angry mob outside of your office, virtual office. I've heard it about this, this one, I've forgotten the name of the developer, but they basically used the word social. They wanted to use a, so, uh, a social component to the game they were developing. And the entire community went up in arms. Well, we don't want any casual Facebook crap. But that was not what he was talking about. It was just the wrong word at the wrong time, misinterpreted by the people listening. Mm-hmm. And things like that happen uh, more often than not in Kickstarted games recently. So, But that, that's mm-hmm. maybe a tangent. I'm still looking forward to Star Citizen. It's, it's still oh. a very ambitious and fun project. But we know that uh, th- this guy, Chris Roberts, has has a, a knack for overpromising. He's ba- basically a, an underfunded Peter Molyneux. An overfunded <laughs> Peter Molyneux. <laughs> underfunded? Wow. Sorry. I've overfunded Peter Molyneux. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think Chris is going to have that problem. Roberts, that is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, Harry, why don't you give us our last story here? <clears throat> uh, the last story is uh, about a game that Actually, at least I know Chris and I both were looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. We both played it. I uh, played it in a press event and in the, a short beta period. Chris played it in beta. I alpha. End of, alpha. It was still an alpha. It wasn't sorry, beta yet. Yeah. Uh, alpha. Yeah, you're right. I played alpha as well. Um, End of Nations, uh, the game that was uh, developed by Petroglyph Studios and published by Tryon, uh, has had a rocky development cycle so far. Uh, The game after Alpha went completely dark under the message, we're going to retool the entire game. After that, they said, we're going to retool it so much because it was an MMORTS. We're going to retool it so much that it's going to be in MOBA. And after that, it went dark again. And now the game has been completely removed from the Tryon website. And the most recent development is that Tryon has confirmed that End of Nations is uh, on hold. And the, the fact that they've removed all assets and all uh, references to it from their website, I mean, just call it cancelled and put it out of its misery. Yeah, mm. it, you know, it was uh, probably one of my the, the, the most fun interviews I've ever done uh, was with uh, with Petroglyph um, at PAX. Oh gosh, that was the year, not last year, with uh, with Mike Leg. That's who it was with uh, at PAX 2012. And I really, really enjoyed that interview. It was really, really fun. He was a super nice guy, and 
everything just went really, really well. And it was a great video in the end. I've just thrown it in the uh, in the show notes here and in our chat room as well for anybody who wants to look at that. And uh, I'm really sad to see it go. I, I mean, I was sad when they did the whole shutting down Petroglyph and the way they retooled everything. And I was interested in seeing Tryon become just a publisher for that and for, for other things they were looking at. But, you know, it doesn't seem like they're... I'm I'd, uh, I'm not happy with it. I was really happy with the the idea they were going, and I, it's too <coughs> bad that they went with the Moba route and then now pretty much shutting it down. The, the, the mm. whole idea of um, MMO RTS hasn't been done well so far, and what I played of the game was really fun. I mean, it was very yeah. early. It was a, it was obviously a very early build that I played, but the the idea behind it was a lot of fun. You know, and for those of you who don't remember, the idea was that. Uh, the battles would be RTS, but the the results of the battles would affect the world at large. And you'd have a character, your general, and that you would grow for the character progression. But the way in which you had the living world was the battles that you were fighting would matter. The results also, would change the world. Also, what I <clears throat> what I really appreciated was there it was no building queue in the traditional sense because one of the things I hate about or hate I'm I suck at at StarCraft and, and games like that is building your base and pumping out units and then discovering that while you're just building your second tank a zerg comes in and blows you out of the sky out of the water Man. and this they didn't do that they had this system of uh, creating your your basically your deck of units before you go into battle with, and uh, your reinforcements as they call them would be called in on the timer, but not uh, based on your infrastructure. Right. So you could basically call in your units and repl re replenish them as a time uh, as a cooldown wound down. Uh, rather than having to worry about the base. And that puts you right into the action, puts everybody on equal footing, except for the choices they made before battle, which yeah. would make an interesting strategic choice at, for, uh, at first. So all kinds of fun little ideas that made the game, at least I was uh, anticipating it uh, until everything went uh, went bad. Yeah. No, it's it's too bad. I'm I'm disappointed. Uh, but it is what it is, right? These things happen, unfortunately, in the industry. Um, yeah, that's sad. Any final thoughts, Bill? Um, not really. I, I, I'm <laughs> almost completely end of nation's ignorance, so I, I can't really comment one way or the other. I mean, I, I always, any game that dies before it really has a good chance is, it seems a little bit sad to me, especially if there is some critical acclaim, obviously, which you guys did appreciate parts of it for sure. It seems a shame that it never got its shot. It is a shame. Right? It's a shame. But, but then again, we don't know. Maybe, maybe what we because you get you get a vertical slice when you're playing an alpha. That's just mm -hmm. uh, a couple of things that work well. They tried it out. Maybe the entire game because one of the things that was still up in the air was the both the payment model. They said we're going to be completely free. Right. And the problem and the problem with uh, the actual because we never saw. Uh, the living world stuff. The meta we game, never saw. Yeah. We never saw the meta game. And if they, if that was the big problem, then maybe it's a good thing because you cannot do that half-assed. No, <laughs> for sure. But this again, the sad part is we'll never know. Yeah, that is absolutely true. Uh, okay, so uh, let's move on to our MMO flashback of the week. This week. It is none other than The Sims Online. Yeah. Oh, wait. Sims, not Sins. <laughs> the number one PC game of all time comes online. And just like any other Sims game, there's no dialogue in the trailer either, except for Simile Union or whatever. Simlish. Simlish, thank you. Yeah. yeah, you pay with simoleons. Thank you. I, wait, thank I you. know way too much about this. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> uh, all right, now, so the a couple of interesting things about the game. It was released December 17th, 2002. The economy was run entirely by players, but uh, unfortunately, bugs in the game let players duplicate things, which uh, surprisingly, shockingly ruined the economy. 
The game also never had a really great system for buying or selling properties and had uh, more scams than your f typical Friday night in EVE. In March 2007, EA assembled a team of 17 people to push significant updates and to rebrand the game into a game called EA Land. <laughs> the game let players create and sell their own content, and could, you could buy in-game currency with real cash. No. Well, the problem with EA Land is you, you walked your sim up to it, and then guys in business suits mugged you and stole your money. That was basically the game. Surprisingly <laughs> enough, pay for that. Surprisingly enough, in April 2008, four weeks after EA Land had launched, it was announced that the development team had been disabled and the game would be shut down on August 1st of the same year. So, yeah, this, this is pretty close to a record for, uh, for launch and shutdown. Uh, four weeks in April, so another eight, like 12 weeks before it shut down. That's, that's pretty close to a record, isn't it? I think so. And it, I love the name. I would have loved to see an MMO called EA Land. Oh <laughs> I never knew goodness. this. I never saw this. Oh, God. I, I think there's a reason you never saw it, because it was crap. Uh, isn't no, EA... there, there has to be a Microsoft land now too. <laughs> isn't EA on the list of one of the most like among the most hated companies in in North America or at least the United States? Like aren't they right up there with like Comcast and But but Comcast cares. There was an internet petition and let let's face it, th those are filled in by by people uh by large groups of people that are motivated not by actual hatred but by internet memes. And uh, if, if there was a petition up there for there wasn't there was a survey an open survey uh, which company do you hate most and apparently a lot of gamers filled that in because I cannot imagine that that, that Joe Sixpack somewhere in the Midwest of the United States says I hate that EA. That well, doesn't, and that that's, doesn't happen. And that's fine, though. But, I mean, if you're if you're a game company and a game publisher, you have to have a little bit of self-awareness and say, you know what, as proud of we as who we are and our fantastic logo and brand, for some reason it doesn't really click with people. So let's just pick another name. Well, there's a, there's a good point. <laughs> I mean, this is not – I don't need to – I mean, you, you got to know where your weaknesses are. And like, but I think money grab online would have <laughs> been yes. more honest. I guess yeah. if you wanted to go for honesty points, yeah, that yeah. would probably. Uh... <laughs> we want your money dot com. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is that. That is our flashback for the week. Uh, Harry, uh, can you please talk about our sponsors? <clears throat> yes, because your voice is breaking. I think you are so. I moved don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your voice is breaking. You're what are you? Fourteen now? Um, Fifteen. <laughs> uh, we have to thank our two um, amazing sponsors who make all of this possible and more. Uh, first up, Doghouse. Doghouse Systems is a fantastic company where you can order uh, your own PC. They will build it to you, for you and bring it to your house. And if you order a PC and use the coupon code MMO Reporter, they will double your RAM for no extra charge. So that is a fantastic deal. MMO Reporter at DoghouseSystems.com. Second up is the fantastic Audible.com, which is a service that will provide you with all the audiobook pleasure that you will need in a lifetime. Uh, uh, their monthly deal is fantastic. You get a free audiobook for your subscription per month, plus all kind of extra stuff. And you can try it out for free by going to audibletrial.com slash MMO Reporter. Your first month is free. The first audiobook you get, you will keep forever, even if you decide to cancel your subscription subscription afterwards. Forever, Harry? For as long as Audible exists and the DRM doesn't go off. Wow. All right. Which is like two weeks. <laughs> Bill. So listen to it quickly. <laughs> Bill, uh, if people want to get a hold of us because they love uh, everything they do, they don't like, maybe, you know, maybe they're not super happy with the way in which Steve edits the show, but, you know, they want to say something. Uh, where can they contact us? Yeah, thanks a lot, Steve. Um, you can head over to our website over at mmoreporter.com. Shoot us an email at mmo.reporter at gmail.com. Visit us on Facebook, facebook.com slash mmoreporter. Tweet at the various mmo tweet at 
MMO <laughs> underscore reporter at Harry Hall at Leonor or at myself MMO Bill. That's actually at MMO Bill, not at myself. At myself is actually who's got that handle? That would be a good one. Tweedledum anyway. should be a good handle. Yeah, there you go. Anyway, you can also give us a call at 616-666-6778. Leave us a voicemail. Let us know what you think in real-time audio, cutting-edge, bleeding technology. We can put your voice on the Internet. By the and way, finally, at, myself, at myself has zero tweets, zero, follower, uh, zero following, and 18 followers. So. Tweedledum also exists. Three tweets, two following, one of, and six followers. Do you think they're Damn following it. our YouTube channel? Because everyone else should. Leonor is t- is putting an incredible effort to start putting all our stuff up on YouTube. YouTube.com slash user slash MMO Reporter Network. Awesome. Well, thanks, Bill, for a fantastic show. Oh, thank you. I, I feel fantastic. And Harry, as always, thank you for getting up ever so early. Playing threes can't talk. <laughs> of course you are. Uh, All right, and thanks to everyone in the chat room for hanging out so vigilantly yet silently as we discuss the world of MMOs. Thanks to everyone for downloading the podcast week after week. We really appreciate it. We hope that you download the podcast again week after week from now. Uh, And, of course, we hope to see you in game. Don't, 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 don't forget about your ults you need to cherish each and every little character you've got, no matter what level they're at. Don't forget about your ults you need to cherish each and every... Can anybody tell me that's not how you play Sims? No, you, you, you find the, the remove sensor patch and you put everyone in the shower. That's how you play Sims. Oh, <clears throat> that might be how you play Sims. I personally oh, just build a house with now four, four walls and no doors. And have my Sims die in their own filth. Uh, or or uh, uh, put a bathroom in there, but wall it off. <laughs> That's just cruel. <laughs> I've seen people do that. That's just uh. terrible. Uh, I'm not one of those people. <laughs>